Hello everybody, Anonymous here, and in this video I will show how I created this sketch using uh, Redux Paint in 3D code and also using a third-party plugin called Easy Mapping from William Forsher. I have another video about a similar technique using my own material, which is available for free, but it doesn't have displacement features like the William Forsher Easy Mapper has. Here, start with this pretty cool sketch. Uh, feel free to use the time codes to jump into different parts of the video uh, if you're not really interested in uh, looking at the process of how I sketch all this. So you can see I'm starting with just a sphere and uh, starting to use the pose tool to make it longer, to make towers, uh, small buildings. This video is about sped up about four weeks. Uh, still, this whole sketch took me about 15, 20 minutes to do. I kind of had an idea of this somewhat of Arabic architecture. I'm going and scaling this down. And every time I scale something uh, non-uniformly, uh, it creates a non-uniform mesh, which I need to make a uniform mesh out of it. Otherwise, it will kind of get, get me a lot of trouble. So now I just want to throw some ground around using a cow brush and paint on, on, on the plane. So I like uh, I like that when you're using the voxel paint, uh, voxel sculpting, sorry, uh, it starts to really kind of uh, get attached to the rocks, uh, to, to the buildings, and it can have this uh, seamless environment uh, built around uh, the the, uh, the town, the buildings. And uh, I didn't have exact uh, preconception of what I was going to do. And just uh, posing a little bit. So we're using the buildings, extending it into a uniform mesh. And now I have, I have a composition. And I, I do like to do this. I do like to scale certain parts uh, of the environment and reuse them around to see if I can get some kind of happy accidents or some new look that I can develop further. And then I had this idea that I could re re reuse these rocks to build this floating island because I, uh, the whole uh, kind of sketch here, the whole exercise was about vertex painting and getting that to Unreal. So you know, I didn't really want to play much with the uh, like landscape stuff in Unreal. I just wanted to create a bespoke environment and begun with that. So I just um, vastly, vastly scaled uh, these rocks to create the cliff type uh, for the floating island. And I'm trying to reshape these uh, towers to make it a bit bigger. Using the fill tool to um, unify little, uh, little rocks to lose some sh extra sharpness. I'm trying to build an entrance. I tried to use the post tool to make it quicker, but then it didn't look good. So now I'm using the blob tool with the on plane on it activated. And I do need to add a thickness to the shell. So I just did extract the shell, extracted the shell. I didn't do it at the right thickness. Uh, unfortunately, there's no preview of the shell extraction, so we have to do it by the guess. So I played with values like 2, 3, 5, or 0, 0 0.1. I, I got a certain depth. And I would extract the shell here as well. And you can see here, I extracted pretty well from the first try. trying to figure out the windows. One thing that uh, this displacement in a real will do, it will inflate the mesh quite a bit. So I do need to encounter that uh, at, uh, for certain effects. I, I kind of want to have maybe a bit more space. I'm trying to set up a radial symmetry. 
to build uh, other elements on this uh, little blob. Again, some design elements. And these guys, I actually like how they turn out later on. They are quite thin here, but this management did actually thicken them and, and inflated them and really helped the look. And now I'm trying to combine everything together, then using the fill tool to remove the seam, uh, the seam out. And I'm pretty happy with the poly account right now. It's uh, quite uh, low poly, 400,000, great for a sketch, and really uh, that material will do the rest. So it's better not to overdo it if it's just like a little development sketch. All right, now we're in the painting room and I'm playing with the materials here. So I will go and use the leaks. You can see they have got the default uh, leaks that basically I just want to have uh, the top-down projection, right? So I have my high-poly model, no EVs, nothing. I am just uh, have a new layer on the right, top-down projection, and we are good. So here I'm starting to play with the settings and changing yeah, changing the edge scattering, the degree. Basically, the edge scattering and the degree and the contrast are the most important parts to deal with. So I don't really need the purple color. I need the red, green, and blue because each red, red, green, and blue will be our masking, right? So we will be using red for one material, green for another one, and blue for another one. I just filled it all up with the fill uh, tool and rectangular selection. And now I just want to introduce the new uh, blue layer. It, I'm creating a new material, but really I, I didn't even need to do that. I, I just need everything to be blue uh, underneath. I could have just used the fill with a plain color. And there we go. Pretty much it's done. To texture this inside Unreal 5, I'm using the EasyMapper plugin from William Fosher. Uh, the, I will plug in the link to the YouTube tutorial and to the plugin itself. It's about $37. I think I bought it on a sale of like 20 bucks. Uh, definitely worth the money because it saves so much time. With the project with all the materials here included, uh, and uh, definitely want to check out William Fosher tutorial to go in depth about it. However, there's one thing that he didn't really cover because it comes with the newer version of Unreal. I need to activate in the material property of rights, I need to activate uh, enable tessellation, that's one, and I need to activate uh, displacement scaling. And I need to go and do it on all those materials and all the material instances in the, in the library that we have. After I did this, you can see I actually have the displacement on. I have my scene where I uh, renamed all the objects here, so have the sensible names. And then if you're going to use this as a kit brush, we do want to place it in the middle of the world, uh, all the props uh, we are using, just because, uh, somewhat in the middle, just because the pivot point will be in the middle of the world and you, you don't really want to have a skewed pivot point because then it gets hard to place objects around. Then we need to go and export this. So I'll go export, export scene, or just select objects if you want export just one prop. I click on that, we get our screen. I'll just go call it a castle test three. And then we have this option either not to decimate and keep 700,000 triangles or decimate it down to 340. Uh, it's okay to decimate it. We'll lose a little bit of quality, but it doesn't have to be high quality anyway. Now I want to input that file, I'll just drag and drop it into the models folder in Unreal. And then what we need to check, I need to 100% build Nanite, otherwise this lesson will not work. Then I need to go into Advanced and go into Vertex Color Input Options and say Replace, so we keep the vertex color from the model from 3D Code. And I say Input All. So I've got all the 
details here, all the all the meshes here. I'll just delete these materials. I don't really need them. And I want to control shift as save the whole uh, scene so it will remember the meshes inside. Just drag and drop, prop right here. I'll assemble the scene and I'll go into the demo materials and I can just drag and drop one of them. So some of these materials only use like one um, mixture. I want to use something that has uh, all the vertex colors. I think maybe that one. And you see, the moment I drop it, it gets assigned to the vertices, uh, vertex colors. I've just activated displacement and enabled tessellation on this material. So therefore, you know, right now it's acting pretty strong, right? So I'll go from 30 to 5. And if you change the center point, it, it is changing kind of the, the point of where it starts to inflate from. So if I make it to the maximum, it, it, it can give sometimes a bit weird results. It starts to, you can see here, it starts to almost shrink so i prefer to keep it like 0.5 that's more normal i want to go into material a and i want to change the tiling of this uh, say global scale material you can see i just drag it and i have i think i have the same materials on a and b so both are the brick walls so i just need to swap one material with another so i'm just i'll change this so it's a more realistic looking Brick Thailand. And my inspiration comes from this photo pack uh, in uh, Thailand, uh, Buddhist uh, temples that are pretty old, like 600 years old, and they all have these brick structures and they even have that same type of uh, cement uh, plaster on top. I do want to go into Quixel and pull some other assets. I do want to use snow and uh, I want to use some cliffs. I type in you know, snow in the surfaces and let's just find some generic looking snow. I like this one, so I'll go, let's go download the medium quality. Don't forget to click add to project. From my cliffs, I'll just pick this rock cliff and download it and add to the project. So now I open my material, go to material C, and I want to swap this uh, to snow, right? So just search for snow, and I'll just swap all these maps to snow. And there we go, we're getting a really strong color. Maybe I even want to overlay with some bluish tint to tone it down. I kind of do need to play with the values to make them looking good. Right now, snow is almost like going inwards. So I want to change displacement intensity and push it, you know, make it stronger. So now it starts to push out. You know, this is now a bit more about the quality of the mask and the polygon kind of counts. The object is fairly low poly, right? So we can see a bit of a jagged line that's created by the low poly count. Try to apply this uh, snow to material A, and now we're getting a little bit like way too much snow. What I decided to do is to reuse the brick material here in material A. However, I tinted it with the uh, like a darker color. Uh, so on one hand, it, it can look like it's melting uh, snow, so it starts to wet the rock, but also I can change the roughness here and make it much more reflective. And there it, it starts to look like it's a bit of like iced wet rock, so which is an interesting look and it makes sense and add a bit of kind of like this freshness to the whole scene. So I've duplicated this instance material and then I we applied the cleave materials, cleave textures uh, to material A and B. And I did the same thing that I darkened the like iced portions of the of the cleave and then lowered down the normal map intensity. It was a bit too high. It was at five, I lowered down to one. I tinted the snow a little bit so it was less blown out. And basically, by we are done and now I already have my pre-made materials. So if I want to drop another location, another uh, quick sketch, I can just apply this to the ground, to the buildings, and we will do it in like a few seconds. Played with the composition just a little bit, uh, duplicated some objects, objects, scaled them, and decided to apply the brick material to the island as well. So now we have this kind of uh, ancient uh, brick wall that was smoothed out by the rain and elements. I hope this tutorial helps uh, to build your own kind of architectural fantasies and uh, quickly, quickly, and quite realistically texture them. So let's see you in the next videos.